Hey guys, it's Frankie M. Grusia, and I've decided to redo my clothing tutorial because I've learned quite a lot of stuff um, in the last, well, it's been like a couple of years now. So I'm just going to start again with Marvelous Designer. Most of the points are still there, so here's just a sim avatar. All the avatars are uploaded on the resource page, so you should find them. And you can put on these dots, so I'm just going to make something really basic at the moment. So, a good idea is to outline whatever you want. You can see the dots already kind of line up. It helps you. This is MD7, so it shows you a couple of things more. And then what I can do is I can take this, I can say copy, and I can right-click and say mirror paste. And if I right-click and flip this horizontally, then I can put this on the back. So, um, you can see there's one dark side and one light side. The dark side always needs to be facing to the inside because theoretically that side of the face is invisible. Faces only have one direction. So, it shows it black so that you can actually see what you're doing, but this side is actually invisible. So, make sure that face is on the inside. What you can also do is shift select two pieces that you've copied and pasted and say symmetric pattern, which means that um, if I edit one thing on here, it'll edit on the other one as well. So let me show you. This is a curve. So I can curve the top in and you can see it edits it on the other side too. Right. Then to make a simple sleeve, we're just going to make a long thing. Take the curve and bump it up. Now a lot of people make sleeves in two parts. I hate this because I really don't like the line that goes down the top of the arm. It's just not very realistic. So I do it like this. Once I've got a curve I like, what I can do is I can use this button, right click here and I can say split. And I can split into two lines, I can split by length, but I usually say uniform split two. And that means it'll put the dot exactly halfway. Sometimes for other stuff, like if you want to do pleats or something, you can say um, split, uniform split. And you can split it into a couple of them and do it on the other side too if you want to do internal lines. So the split button is pretty cool. Um, another thing to show you, let's say, let me just say split like this. Internal lines like this. Press enter if you don't want to keep going. And you've got the ability to say and so, so this is how a lot of people make their sleeves in two parts. Now let's say I did this and I don't want my sleeves to be in two parts. What I can do is I can click this line, shift, click this line, shift, click this line, and say merge. And it'll merge them up again. And then I can just delete this little button and go, because I don't need it. It'll still show me a merge line. What's also cool, which you might need, which is useful for making hats, is if I say here, unfold, and it'll unfold it as if it was a folded piece and duplicate on the other side. Let's just undo that. Control Z is always undo. So let me just put my key gen on it and that might help. Okay, so now I've got the sleeve, it's floating around. This is why I always start with an avatar that has dots on it. Click the sleeve, click the dots on the arm, a bit long the sleeve. So to shorten it, I can either click here and shorten it this way, or I can just click on this bottom line and pull only that part up, wherever I want it. And then I'll click it on the dot again. Sewing is simple, sewing lines and sew. You can see here where it's sewing. Just make sure you sew in the right directions, your sewing lines are straight. For sewing patterns, I usually just look online, to be honest, figure out what looks good. That was incorrect. You can see I went diagonal. That should go to that sleeve and that should go to that part. And those two look together. Right, press spacebar. There we go. You can see my sleeve is a bit too fat. So I'm just going to click it and go like this. A bit too skinny now.
And you can see that because it's got a bulge here, it's bulging up here. So I'm just going to indent these. That did not help. And then take this down to make the bump a bit less. One thing you don't need to worry about is if some parts just look a bit wonky. Because a lot of things can be fixed in Blender. That's not helping. Oh. It's a lot of fiddling about until you get it done. At the moment, the issue is that it's, it's just pointing out too much. There we go. Got a nice sleeve. Let's just do it on the other side. Jill, I'm not going to continue this up, but this is just to show you something. Other cool things are clicking the line, and you can say elastic. You'll see it pulls together at the bottom here, and you can fiddle with the strength. It goes outwards or inwards, and with the uh, ratio. So maybe I want a sleeve like this. What's also cool, what you can later do, is you can click a piece. This is especially useful if you're age converting or something. And you can say shrinkage worth, which is left, right, and shrinkage warp, which is top, bottom. So I can say I want to make this 110%, so just longer and bigger. Now I've got a nice puffy sleeve, if I wanted it, for example. Right, same can be done with these. So I can say I want this whole top a bit better. That's a bit of an easier way to do it. Um, other important things. Add thickness render, so I can set this to 4. And thickness collision to 4. It kind of makes the top a bit thicker. You can't really see it much, but sometimes it does make a difference. Also, of course, fiddling around with... Um, Property settings of the fixture, so if the pen's a bit looser, if it's tighter, you just have to fiddle around with this. This obviously makes less fold and makes it more poofy. Um, what's also useful is if you click on a piece, go down to miscellaneous, you can change it to a quad mesh. That sometimes makes it a bit smoother. Also reduces poly count. If you're doing a mesh that doesn't have such a high poly, it doesn't consist of a gazillion parts. You can also change this particle distance to 15 or something. I wouldn't go below this really. And that can also do some changes. It makes the folds a bit more rounder because it has more particles to work with. AKA the poly count's higher, which generally makes things smoother. Mm, this one's a bit too long. I'm just going to set that back to 100. But yeah. Um, yeah, fiddle with the, the properties. You can also click on a fabric and um, say presets. There are presets like chiffon or whatever. If you want to make a new fabric, click on the next one. You can change the color here. I don't usually fiddle around with materials much in ND. And then apply your other fabric by dragging it onto whichever parts you want to have that fabric setting. Yeah. Um, also, other things, if I want to make a hole, for some ungodly reason, holding shift makes your circle be a circle. If you don't want to hold shift, you can make an oval. Draw a line. Now the problem is I have symmetry locked. So what I do with this side, I do with this side. So I'm just going to say um, remove linked editing. And now I can click this and say convert to whole. There we go. Got a hole in the back, don't ask me why. Um, other things I can do is say I want to make a pocket. I would make an internal square line, which is this, like this. For some reason I want a pocket there. I usually end up curving the bottom part. And then I can click this and I can say, um, Clone as pattern, and it'll make me a piece of pattern that's the same size. So now I can sew this on. Obviously, don't sew the top part because it's supposed to be a pocket. But what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to say layer this as layer one, so that it's on the outside of my other top. Press play, and here I have a pocket. 
Obviously, because it's sewn to the same size piece, it's not going to be very floppy. So what I can do is I like to say, flatten it up a bit and it'll dangle forwards a bit and look more like a pocket. So yeah, that's pretty useful. Buttons, I don't do an MD. I don't use any of these um, buttons or the zipper tools here because the poly count, poly count just becomes extortionate. So I usually ignore that. Right, what's also important? So, what's also important? Say I'm fiddling around with this top. I'm going to go back to some kind of skin in. I don't know whether. Fiddling around with my top and pressing space bar freezes it again. And I like how the top looks, but I still want to fiddle around with this. I can right click and I can say freeze. There's also a strengthen, which is sometimes used in this pool. So if I freeze that, then it's only going to fiddle around with these top bits and not with this. If you don't want to freeze a whole part, which sometimes happens, say, I, I don't know what, I like this top fold, but this bottom bit looks weird. What I can do is I can use this button in MD7. And this, I can select a part which only pins that part. Now if I play, I can still fiddle around with this part, but that top part's frozen. This is really useful when making wrinkled fabric, because if you like a wrinkle, you can freeze that area. To delete it, right click it and say delete selected pin or delete all pins. And that way I have a bit more freedom freezing parts. I um, don't think there's much else I usually do in MD. My MD stuff is usually not that incredible. So... Yeah, there's a lot of other options in MD, but the best thing is to just watch um, YouTube tutorials on all this stuff um, to figure out what you want to do. So obviously, uh, save project as often as you can. Oh yeah, what I want to do is, let's freeze this pretend I really like this horrible sleeve. At some point, I'm going to delete my avatar, and for a top, I'm going to import an avatar with pants. Because you'll see in game, this top is so tight. Just click X on that. It just completely and utterly collides with pants. So now I import one with pants. And I'll just pull my top out so that it's no longer clipping. With the pants. And that way I've got a top that ends up fitting over pants, which is important. Little clipping like this, I ignore. I can fix this in Blender. It's just general clipping. To make tops fit over pants, otherwise in Sims it just becomes annoying if the top just clips with the pants to it all the time. I think for adult males and for kids and for toddlers I've uploaded my avatars with pants. I don't start with these avatars because they don't have these blue dots, so I can't do sleeves easily. Yeah, so that was just a couple of basics. So I'm not going to save this, I'll show you I was working on this make you a mesh that I could do the tutorial with. You can see I pinned this and it's just going to be a pair of pants. So here you can also see that the top line is kind of wavy. But yeah. So let's go to some export settings. Export object. So your export settings. Untick avatar. You don't need the avatar. You don't theoretically need the patterns either so you can untick that if you want or delete them later. Single object. Unweld. Definitely important. If you weld it, then your parts won't be singular anymore. It'll just be one big mesh with one all parts pretty much attached. Uh, thin, if you do it thick, you're doubling your poly count at least because you've already solidified it and that's not a good idea. Unified UV coordinates. If you don't do this, all your UV parts are going to overlap and you're going to have to play a nice game of try and separate them in Blender. Scale always needs to be M. Your axis conversions need to be this, the way it's said here. Otherwise, your pants will be laying sideways or upside down or I don't know what. So yeah, make sure it's these settings. So yes, that's pretty much the part that I do here. Um, if there's particular things that people want to see, I think I've done a couple of extra tutorials on MD. So yeah. Uh, yeah, the internal lines again, um, say, 
pretend this was a coat. Um, and I want to open the coat, I would just make an internal line, right click it and then say cut. Cut opens parts up like this. And in fact, that's pentagon up and up, but yes, that would, ha would be how I'm going to um, open up coat. So I would make the coat first close and then do it because it's really annoying. In the end, then I work mainly with freezing parts and with pinning parts, as you can see, because that for me is pretty much the coolest. So yeah. Next part will then be Blender.